Hello everyone, and welcome back to UK Panda 4x4. This time on the channel, we have some highlights from our latest day out in the Lake District. If you enjoy watching the pandas doing their very best at off-roady things, then stay tuned, it's all coming up. So how can we best describe a highlights video? You could argue that all of our videos consists of only highlights, however, this video is very much highlights and basically all of the footage that we could get due to a monumental failure that we had on one of the lanes. You'll see that very soon. But until then, you can enjoy the transition between Yorkshire and Cumbria just as Jacob and I did on our way to the Lake District. It was a lovely Friday afternoon for a drive out. We were headed for Ulverston where our accommodation awaited before dinner at John Paul's and some green lanes after dark. Ultimately we were waiting for Freddie and Chris to arrive. Three cars were out on the trails, John Paul with Adam, myself and Jacob and Steve with John. As the sun was setting everything was going just lovely, until John Paul realised his wheel was falling off. Disaster quickly averted though and we carried on. With our guide and expert in the local trails, we were having a wonderful Friday evening following the quite frankly rubbish headlights of the Fiat Pandas. As darkness fell, there wasn't much more to tell, so we will fast forward to our Saturday morning. The embarrassment was up early and accumulated at 8am. The upmarket meet point of Booth's car park in Ulverston had never seen so much rust and so many oil leaks. Without further ado, packed lunches were purchased and we hit the road towards our first green lane. The Fox in Grisdale Forest was the first port of call. We didn't have a great history green laning in this place and it wasn't about to change anytime soon. It'd be a panda meet without John doing the tyre, would it? Do you want to just pull it onto somewhere a bit more? Yeah, uh, yeah just bring it up here there. a bit, John. Achievable. Yeah. Must have been a shock, because it just literally, I'll bounce up to you. Yeah, just a sharp edge. Meanwhile, at the back of the group, Adam had jumped at the chance to get amongst a bit of repair work during the downtime. Break down at the back, Jacob. Again? I could do a 213. Oh, there we are, that's nice and loose, look at that! Something loose? There's the adjustment there, yeah, yeah. I thought that was going to be a bit, but that's actually been. 
to my eyes. <laughs> Is there one on 11 mil on the shaft? No, they're all 13. Hmm. But I can't quite get my spanner in there to f*** around. Kind of the service stuff. <laughs> You don't need it with this guy. Axle it's that high. Yeah. <laughs> with stage miles to complete, it was all hands on deck at the front of the group to get John's wheel changed in double quick time. After a very efficient pit stop, John had the Mark III back on the trail and pointing towards the uphill. John's struggling a bit. Let me jump out, you know. How's he done? He's done it. I'll just I'll do some filming. Jacob was third in line with a Mark II Sisley which he had recently acquired from another member. This car had only just passed a fresh MOT after being laid up for a couple of years. Even though the seller was trustworthy, it was still an unknown entity as far as reliability goes. Following Jacob up the Fox was local hero Grant in his Mark IV, making it look easy on home turf. Steve was next in line with the 100 horsepower self-build. These rocky and rutted lanes are an ideal proving ground for the valley's constructions. Driving these lanes with such ease certainly shows just how worthwhile it's been spending the hours of design and manufacture towards the suspension lift on these two pandas. Last but certainly not least, it was myself and Chris, grading off all the rocks and heading up the rear. As the first section of this infamous green lane was coming to an end, things were about to get a lot more stationary. With the group leaders heading off up the fire break, it was at this point when Jacob's luck with the new car was about to run out. Disaster strikes. We're uh, maybe an hour into laning and uh, the casualty Mark two. When are you going on? <laughs> Next week. Has <laughs> <laughs> the board joint just popped out? Was actually separated. It was. It started knocking. Yeah, in some time ago, an, an hour ago, that was clear. Yeah. Yeah. It was there was no play in it. Yeah, right. It wasn't long before the group leaders realised that we were no longer in tow. We've lost the others. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened to him? After the punishment of the previous lane, Jacob's ball joint had snapped completely in half. Although the cup and pin of the ball joint were still intact, the worry was that because the wheel had folded underneath the sill, pushing the strut backwards, it had pulled the drive shaft out of the gearbox and could have damaged the tripod bearing or in fact the tulip output. <laughs> And when you 
I may. No, because it's pointless lifting that because then we won't be able to shove it. To shove it across, yeah. Can't we? Yeah. I think, we I think this down. release this so there's less tension on them buffers there. That'll give us a bit more room. You're not going to put them back in. No. no, I don't mean just like <laughs> taking the nut off to the end. <laughs> Leave the nut on, so it can, yeah. so it can it give you a bit it, more. Cause we're trying to ban that now, aren't we? With those rubbers in there, we, we probably we probably achieve more on doing that. To be fair. Yeah, yeah. What's happening now? We need to go. I think we need to go that way with it, Jacob. If we get the shaft that way, you pull bring that out. It, bring that to Bring it to that side. Oh, what a prize! That's fine. Fine. That's going to be hard, yeah. That's going to be hard. Like, literally just pulled the boot off the check the tulip and snapped. You may need a line. Need a line. Yeah. 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 This side that do it on mine. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's crapped yeah. it off. Yeah. Yeah. It went too far in though. It came out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's because you, you bent the lower arm, didn't you? Yeah. 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 That guy was restricting yeah, yeah. us. Yeah, yeah, I think you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> I keep missing the shaft related jokes and I'm not yeah. filming them. <laughs> Don't worry, they'll be along soon. I ain't got my t shirt on today either. <laughs> <laughs> mm. That'll go back on. You need hammer and chisel. I need, I need some it. slack. <laughs> well, I've got a cable, a good size cable tie for that. Working under pressure here, aren't tight you? Side, does it? It doesn't matter. Trying, trying to put a rubber on a shaft with an audience. Yeah. <laughs> The aim was to get Jacob's car back into a safe driving condition so he could get it down the hill back to John Paul's garage where it could be fixed properly. The team worked superbly together for a couple of hours and eventually the car was back on four wheels. Even though it meant holding the strut to the bottom arm with a ratchet strap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's not hit the wheel, you see, is it? Uh, if when it's going to be shook, it should be fine. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the blue corner, it was another Mark III prop shaft support guard needing a Yorkshire repair method. <laughs> Bit of precision engineering going on. Go that way a little bit, slowly, yeah.
For 75% of us, the fox was completed successfully. After we'd gathered up our nerves, we left Grizzly Grisdale returning to John Paul's for dinner, where Jacob had managed to nurse his car back in one piece. It's at this point we need to give public thanks to Simon Nutter from the Seat Marbella Club. He lives in the Lake District and had a hub carrier with a bottom ball joint attached. David went to pick it up and Jacob installed it on his car, fixing it for the safe drive home. But our day didn't end there. More green lanes were on the cards, so we headed for Parkermore. After a couple of tries, Grant did make it up the steep climb. No driver error here. Unfortunately, Fiat's multi-jet diesel just doesn't produce enough low-end torque to act as it should in these steep situations. Hence, why Grant had to put the revs on.
Ouais, mais dure pas, ouais, dure pas. Yeah, you need to come this way more. That's it. Come there. Come left hand down a bit. That's it, but. Yeah, still got the stuff. <laughs> Nicely done. The top of Parkamore was reached and we were greeted with some amazing views. It has to be said, this was one of my favourite green lanes that we have done in recent times. It certainly is very difficult to beat the scenery around the Lake District.
With a big thanks to John Paul for our day out around his home county. We hope that we can return again soon and explore some of this glorious vista. And that's the end of our coverage. But don't forget, what goes up must come down again. Are you ready? Thanks very much for watching, we'll see you next time on UK Panda 4x4.